talking about this all day, the Yankee closer situation, and Aaron Boone has addressed it, and uh, my good buddy, Jack Curry of the Yes Network, is tweeting out what Boone is saying. Oh, he addressed it again today now. Here we go. Pre Boone said the Yankees will get quote-unquote creative with the closer role in the short term. He said that Holmes could still be in the mix. Now, Jack says, I don't think Boone wants to publicly say that Holmes has lost his job, even temporarily. They expect the Yankees to go with matchups for the foreseeable future. Now, when Boone was asked if Luis Heel or Schmidt could be late-inning bullpen options, he said, never say never. Boone said one starter will need to go back to the pen when everyone is back. But what is most relevant is whether Yanks would give a starter with swing and miss stuff a chance to close. Hey, let's interpret that. Holmes is not the closer anymore. Of course. He doesn't want to come out and say it, as Jack said. He's not the closer. I mean, a responsible team cannot continue to run Clay out there and have him blow games. Every game now is so darn important. They have 23 games remaining, and they dropped out of first place. He's blown 11 saves. Of those 11 saves, eight of them have been losses. If they just split those eight, they'd be three and a half games up on the Orioles. You can't continue to do this. These games are too important. When there's a long runway... You can make mistakes. You can lose games every now and then. When there's a short runway, you can't do that. And this is the shortest runway that you're going to have. These 23 games are going to be like playoff games for the Yankees. You can't have a closer who just completely melted down on the mound yesterday and lost a game the Yankees should not have lost. It's the eighth game this year that they have lost when leading in the ninth inning or later. This was the only thing for them to do. Now, do they have a ready-made closer? No. Creative is the best way to put it. Find lanes. See what you got. See if Luke Weaver has the stomach to do it. See if Jake Cousins can do it. See if Ian Hamilton comes off the IL and can do it. Check them all out. Yep. You got to do it, Don. You got to say, okay, there's well, two lefties coming up in the next three. Maybe today we'll go with Tim Hill. You just don't know. You can't continue to give the ball to Holmes. You can't. Now, this is not a surprising announcement. We knew that Clay Holmes was not going to be closing. But what I found interesting was we're going to have to get creative, which tells me they don't have a candidate. They don't. They're now searching for it. So they're going to they're gonna try. Uh, we'll see who's up first. Uh, and they will try until they figure somebody is right for that role. So the question now becomes, Michael, like how many games could possibly be lost while they're trying to figure this out? So now everything's up for grabs. Like you could be happy that Holmes isn't going to close, but you're not going to be happy until they finally find somebody that can do it. So how, how many blown saves might there be before they discover that guy? And how d big of a hole will they dig while they look? Well, we might find out tonight. Because Holmes couldn't be used tonight anyway. And I do agree, there might be a game where Holmes ends up closing the game. And that could be because you've used up all of your relievers before. And then you, you, you came back and you're leading a game going to the bottom of the ninth inning that you didn't think you were going to be leading. And he's going to have to close the game. But in terms of going to him every single time, if he's rested, when you have a lead, those days are over. You can't, you can't risk it. It's too important. Too important. And I said this at the beginning of the show, and I truly believe it. It's going to be awfully tough to win a championship if they get in as a wild card. Too many layers, three games set, you might lose two games just like that, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden your season's over. Yeah. You want your first playoff series to be a best-of-five division series. You just do. <laughs> it's imperative. How do you rate this Yankee team's starting pitching at this point? I think their starting pitching is fine. I think Rodon was excellent yesterday, Peter. Um, Cole has pitched to about a 190 ERA since the beginning of August, so looks like he, he seems to have found he, it. He looks like he's found. It. I don't think he's all the way back, but even not all the way back, he's still one of the better pitchers in baseball. Stroman Stroman has been great since the beginning of August. His last five starts have been on the money, so they've got plenty of options um, huh. starting wise. It's their bullpen now that has well, to be figured out. But I, but I, the reason I ask is, is because if you didn't feel that way, if you don't feel that they're that they're starting pitching is at least clicking and very good, how many teams win championships without any bullpen, any closer to speak of, and a, a sub-average or average pitching staff? 
It, that, that means you shouldn't even really well, be thinking about championship. But the fact that the you, that you believe the pitching staff is there right now, maybe that gives you hope that if their bats uh, yeah, stay but, alive, get alive in the playoffs, they could go on a run. But to me, it's not as relevant because no nobody's pitching any complete game. You're going to need a closer, no matter how good your starting pitching is. Yep. Yeah, and let's face it, you're probably going to need to get at minimum six outs, maximum nine, possibly 12. So you're going to need your bullpen, but at some point, the option's never going to be, maybe with Cole Michael in a big postseason game where he might be able to give you nine, but everybody else, there's not going to be the option of, well, maybe we'll get a complete game and not have to use our closer. That, that's not the way baseball is anymore. And isn't that doesn't that stink? By the way, I, I do miss it. I, I find the I find the pitching by committee to be kind of just boring. You know what? You know what? I'm watching yesterday's game. What they have done to this game, all right? They've turned it into a bullpen game. Everything because you cannot be better. You cannot be better than Carlos Rodon does yesterday. And it was mm-hmm. like they they didn't even think twice about having him come out and pitch the seventh inning because he had 99 pitches. That's what this game has become. They have Michael, cut people off at 100 pitches, and they will not let them go further. And that puts the hands of the game uh, in the bullpen. So so well, the bullpen obviously, is in the hands of the game. Uh, so Definitely obviously it. Yeah, you got it wrong twice. So obviously <laughs> it changes the game just from a, a strategy standpoint and, and and the role of the pitchers, but also just from a, like a consumer standpoint, from a, a fan of the product standpoint, God, it removes such a great storyline. I mean, I'm sorry. Is, to me, there's nothing more a pug than you, you miss a game and you go, what happened last night? And you, and you look in the box score, Don, and you just wow. see seven names listed under pitcher. When you get to the playoffs, right. I want to see it, pitchers do this. I, I, I want to see people go. I, that's how I always was. Now, maybe that's because I was a pitcher when I was growing up or maybe because, you know, the Mets, the best part of the Mets history is about their pitching. But, Michael, the, you know, one of the greatest games I can think of was Game 7 of the 91 World Series. I mean, that was one of the great pitching matchups of all time, and you're never going to see it. You still will see the occasional complete game and no hitter. But to have two pitchers in a postseason game go at it, you know, through nine and maybe beyond, those days are way over. And I think that's an aspect of the game that's uh, really lost. And I, I think know everybody ba- wants offense, but... Baseball knows it, Don, and that's why they're tossing around <laughs> these, these scenarios where... Uh, there'll be advantages for a team if you let a pitcher go long. If you take a pitcher out after five innings, you're going to lose the DH. I mean, I don't know when this is going to be implemented, but it can. But baseball has trained its starters to do this. I don't blame the starters. They get all itchy because they have that run sheet that says third time through the order, you know, the batting averages go up. But would that apply yesterday to Rodon, the way Rodon was pitching? Yeah, if a pitcher is is tiring, batting averages will go up. But the the bottom line is you've crushed the game, and one of the big things in the game, Bob Gibson's starting today. Sandy Koufax is starting today. Jack Morris is starting today. Because you knew there's a chance they'd pitch a a complete game. Now starters are minimalized, and Don always brings this up, and it's such a great point. Again, I'll give him point God. All they do, they want to throw money at starters. $43 no, million. No, that, dollars. Actually, I, I, I think that's originally a me point. Well, then I give I, it to I, you. I take credit for it. The, the money wasted on on starting pitching versus everyday players is absolutely insane when you've minimized them to, to five, six inning pitchers. And you almost should pay the, the, the relievers more because they're closing out the games. And also, do you remember, Don, it, it seems like, f- f- now it seems like a million years ago. But just a second ago, we had this really exciting time for Mets fans. What was it based on? It was completely, completely based on the starting pitching staff. It was the rotation that made the Mets dynamic in 2015 and 2016. And it was such a thing. Yeah. To, well, like, the, the, the Syndergaard, Syndergaard pitching was such a big deal. DeGrom pitching was such a big deal. It feels like, Michael, just in the last seven, eight years, the game's been transformed. And this game, like, oh, we want to get, we want to be more popular. We want to have younger uh, fans. I don't think this creates a- any better fan No, base. it doesn't. And I've said this a million times. The people that are entrusted to win games, the front offices, they're entrusted to do the best thing they can to maximize your winning potential. They're not entrusted for entertainment value. They don't care. They're they're told, here, your job is to try to win this game. Help us win 100 games. Not help us entertain, keep people engaged. No, no, no. They don't care about that. Until they do, until that's their job, then they're not going to think in those terms. They're just not. And I said something the other day on a broadcast, and I'm almost embarrassed in retrospect to what I said. A pitcher went five and two-third innings. They took him out. He gave up like a run. And I said, wow, 
Pitcher X, what a brilliant performance. Brilliant performance. Five and two-third innings. Oh. It wasn't even a quality hey, start. My, uh, yeah, well, we, we, we used to, Michael, growing up, we'd laugh at quality starts. Right. Oh, only had to go six innings. Now these guys, it would be a brilliant start. They didn't even give you a quality start. So I, I just went back to the box score of that 91 game seven. Now, John Smoltz, seven and a third. But Jack Morris, Michael, 10 innings, seven hits, no runs, two walks, eight strikeouts. I, I don't know how many pitches he threw. He probably threw a ton. And he would have killed Tom Kelly if no. Tom Kelly tried to take him uh, out. And, 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 that, and it was a one nothing. The, the final score was one nothing. game seven. Tell me that's not compelling. So I know you want home runs, you want offense, you want stolen bases, you want balls in play. But sometimes when you get that kind of – when you get two future Hall of Famers pitching against each other in a decisive game and, and see a guy go – 10 innings for the win for his team to capture a World Series. Uh, I think that's entertaining, too. And that would never, Michael, that would never happen today where you'd see a starting pitcher. I don't well, care how well he pitched, pitch well, into the 10th. Well, let, let's just look at the Yankees. In a game that they had to win against Cleveland in the playoffs, they started Davey Garcia and they used him for one inning before they went to Jay Happ. So they tried to get cuter than cute and it blew up in their face. It did. So. Yankees tonight against the Rangers. Stroman uh, is against Evaldi. And then the Mets tonight trying to sweep the Red Sox. Red Sox right now, their playoff hopes hanging by a string. Hanging by a string. The Mets are just a, a half a game out behind the, the Braves. And, and, Don, you said this earlier. They got a chance to catch all of the wild card teams. Yeah. I don't think they have a chance to catch the Phillies to win the East. No. But I, I still think, I'll still hold firm because I don't like the flip-flop, but I think the Padres are better. I think the Diamondbacks' offense is better, and they have good pitching. And the Braves have winning DNA. So I think the Mets still might fall short, right. but they are they really trying to change my mind. But the numbers, just because everybody's focused on the Braves because you're only a half game back, one back in the loss column. You're only three back in the loss column of Arizona and San Diego. And I would, I would think, Michael, I don't have the schedules in front of me that the Padres and Diamondbacks will likely play uh, down the stretch. So uh, I'm just saying the Mets continue to play the way they're playing. Uh, then I think everything could be open with the exception of the division. I'm with you. I don't think there's enough time for that. But with 23 games left to play and the way that they're playing right now, um, that th you got to feel pretty good about their chances of being able to at least be in this thing right to the bitter end. And maybe, maybe the playoffs certainly are on the table. Didn't feel that way a week ago when they were four back, and now they're a half game back. Um, we have the Mets and the Red Sox following our show, coverage of the uh, Mets and the Red Sox, right here on 880. ESPN. Peter, what did you think of um, uh, the city of Camden, New Jersey, trying to get the the, the Sixers to move there? Um, I don't think I the Camden Sixers would have rolls off your tongue. Well, I, how how legitimate a shot do they have at this? Pretty possibly? big because that's where that's where their practice facility is, and they're offering them the mm -hmm. world. That, but I think they would still stay the Philadelphia 76ers. Yeah, maybe. Because Camden is a suburb of Philadelphia. It's right there, as you said, the Flyers and the Sixers train there. So it wouldn't mean anything. It would just be like your... It would just be one of those... Washington like the, plays like, well, in Well, it's Landover. like the Jets and Giants playing in East Rutherford. That's the way it would be. All right, let's get, take some phone calls before we go to uh, coverage of the Mets and the Red Sox. Kurt in Port Washington. Kurt. Hey, guys. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good, good. We've spoken many times. And I know I brought this subject up, but I, I want to bring it up again. Um, you say teams don't care about innings limits anymore. But my question is this. Wouldn't he all be a great closer? I mean, Clark Schmidt is coming back. So that's their dilemma, is dealing with a six-man rotation. So he throws 100 miles an hour. He has great stuff. I think he'd be a yeah, great but there's closer. only uh, he, well, he, he's got swing and miss stuff, Kurt. I would agree, but he walks so many people. You can't you can't walk people in the in the ninth inning trying to close a game. So that would I mean, really make me he, nervous. Isn't he a better option than Holmes? In my opinion. Well, I mean, right now you're trying oh, to find somebody to replace Holmes, but I mean, if we're looking I, for the perfect replacement, you don't want a guy who walks that many people. But I think he deserves a chance. I mean, he might be one of the guys they bring in there to try to do it. I don't know. I mean, if they think that he's, I mean, if, if they feel that he's still a viable starter despite the innings that he's pitched, Don, don't you want him starting game three of the playoffs after, after Rodon? Oh, I, I think the idea is to not try, but I think he'll get a shot before Holmes comes back. You, know, you wouldn't give him a shot to try. Well, I don't think Holmes is coming back. 
Right, but I'm. But my point is, is that if everybody else fails, wouldn't you give him a shot? Or no? I mean, you got uh, a six man. You know, you, are you going to go with a six man rotation? No, they're not going with a six. Start? Just, just this time through, and it's, it's actually Cortez who's going to pitch out of the bullpen, backing up Schmidt and Heal, who are both going to start against the Cubs. So they will piggyback Cortez. But then they say Cortez will come back and pitch against the Red mm -hmm. Sox. So I don't think they want it. They, they they want to stay away from a six man rotation. So one starter is going to go out. Now, if you ask me, well, what starter is best suited to close? Has the best stuff? I'd say Garrett Cole. But you don't want to do that because he doesn't walk people and he, he can strike you out. The second guy I think that translates is is heel, but the walks are a concern. Walks are a concern. Yeah. Daniel and Stanford. Hey, what's going on, guys? How you doing? Uh, Michael, first of all, we have the same barber. I think that's pretty cool. A little small world. A classic thing. barber. Junior? Yeah, uh, no. So I actually have his brother, Tony. He's done my hair for 25 years. I've got Junior. He's, done my He's entire great. Life. He's the only barber I've ever had. He's great. That, it's yeah, a great place. Um, so I, I'm calling because I, and this is kind of just a fundamental thing that I've, I've noticed with Cashman. And I, and I think all of the transgressions with this team stem from him mostly. Just because I think that he has a tendency to to want to be cute, he wants to do the cute thing. And and Michael, you've harkened back to this back in that uh, that series against the Rays uh, uh, in the postseason, where he had I can't remember the pitcher, but he had him come in. Uh, Was that again? That, that, that it would be Davey Garcia Hap. and then and Jay Happ. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and he tried to get cute there, and he's and he's doing this. With positions too, he's doing this with third base. He's he's trying to patch holes at third base, left field, um, and and now the bullpen. And and it's and he's trying to be the the smartest guy in the room when he doesn't have to be. He has he has Cashman, uh, not Cashman money, has Steinbrenner money backing him up, and he's trying to be cute, and he doesn't have to be. He can be. You know, he can he can bring in people. I mean, obviously, don't bring, you know, he doesn't have to go crazy with it. But but he doesn't have to be the smartest guy in the room all the time. Well, Daniel, I have I have always said this and I've said it. I've said it to Aaron and I've said it on the air. So I'm sure the Yankees have heard. They don't have to be the smartest guy in the room. They're the best looking guy in the room. When you're the best looking guy in the room, you don't have to be the smartest. And by the best looking, they've got so much at their disposal. When you have a $313 million payroll, you shouldn't have to get cute at anything. There shouldn't be spots where you have to get cute. You just shouldn't. They have a $313 million payroll. That's why I laugh when people give me, well, the, you know, the Steinbrenners really don't want to win. Really? Then why wouldn't they have a $220 million payroll and make another $100 million in profit? Why? They go to 313 which is higher than anybody, and that's still not good enough to run away with the East? Don't get it. You, you shouldn't have to get cute when you have a $313 million payroll. You shouldn't. But I do think there is something to wanting to kind of flex that I'm smarter than everybody else muscle that, that I think frustrates a lot of fans. Why are you thinking outside the box? Like, I've said it before. You, you just said it. Like, why wouldn't Hal go, Brian, why am I why am I spending all this money? If you're going to be so analytically driven and you see what the Rays have been able to accomplish, on a, well, then why am I spending all this money? Why am I doing both? I thought one was so that you could save money, that small market teams can compete, that I don't have to have a $300 million payroll in order to win because we're so smart. So why, why, am, I, why am I spending so much more money than everybody else? Let's go to Steve and Mayapak. Steve. Steve. Hi, guys. Mike, I keep hearing about talking about Clay Holmes, Clay Holmes. What about Boone? If he's going to make a switch, why didn't he go in the seventh inning and remove LeMahieu and have Rizzo? I spoke about that earlier. Seventh. He he made a big mistake. He made a big mistake. I love yeah, when Steve changes where he's from as if we don't know who he is. Yeah, Steve, we, we can hear you, bud. Right. There's it's, a very cool. distinctive voice. We hear you, bud. So I, okay. We'll take your call. We've always taken this listen, call. Listen, pinch hitting Rizzo for LeMayu. After LeMayu made an error at first, terrible move. Terrible non-move. But I love that the Boone blew the game. No, 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 no. 
Clay no. Holmes blew the game. Clay Holmes didn't perform. Right. You got a lead to your closer. That's why I never say Mike Hargrove lost the World Series. He got it to Jose Mesa, and Jose Ma he got game seven right. to Jose Mesa with a lead. That's it. Manager's job is done. Then he didn't perform. Yesterday, Clay Holmes didn't perform. Yeah, that error would have been a footnote had Holmes done his job. Right. Now, it's still a mistake by Boone, but it didn't cost him the game. It is a terrible mistake, and that's why I brought it up earlier. <sighs> I guess Steve didn't hear no. that. And you know what? On top of all this, guys, when we get to the playoffs, we're going to have the question we've had about this team in the playoffs every year in the last many years with this team. And what's that? Are, are you going to hit? Yeah. That's the other piece. Like We can talk about this until we're blue in the face. The fact is their lineup is limited, and they've generally struggled in the postseason. And the one knock that Aaron yeah. Judge ever has to deal with is he hasn't really hit in the postseason. So there's a lot for this team to deal with.